For patients that require sinus surgery, what happens is the maxillary, sphenoid, and frontal sinuses are made wide open. In addition, the ethmoid labyrinth of bone is also removed all the way up to the skull base. This allows for better irrigation into the sinuses and it also allows for better aeration of the sinuses. So let's look at a patient of mine who had sinus surgery. This is the right nasal cavity, inferior turbinate, middle turbinate, maxillary sinus right here, sphenoid sinus right here. Here's a little partition along the skull base. And as we flip the camera upside down, now we're looking up at the skull base Here's skull base, skull base, partition. Here's the lamina or the eye socket. And here's the frontal sinus right up here. Now let's take a look at my next patient, a left side, middle turbinate right here, lamina or eye socket right here, sphenoid sinus. Now you see that this patient has a little mild infection in her left sphenoid sinus. So the nice thing about that, and here's a little swelling up here. And as we come out, here's the skull base and here's the frontal sinus, which is nice and open, okay? The nice thing about when a patient has sinus surgery is now I can go in with a suction and actually suction out that mucosa, okay, or that, or that infection. Here I am going over a ledge with a curved suction and aiming down towards the floor of that sphenoid sinus. I'm able to get that out as well as this little streak of mucus. After this, I have the option of putting antibiotics directly into that sinus instead of putting the patient on an oral antibiotic. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share to help us grow. Also, for more content like this, please check out our courses for APPs, medical residents, APP and medical students at CompassioMedical.com. We'll see you there.